Hello and welcome to another DeFi chain source code analysis video. Today I want to talk about the main changes in the upcoming hard fork on 11th of April. And basically what this uh, update is about is mainly the implementation of this DFIP 2203, um, which is solving the DDoCon premium by the future contracts. It's basically two big things in this um, uh, DFIP. It's on the one hand, this proposal with the future contract, and on the other hand, um, this um, strengthening of the DUSD by counting them in the same way as the mandatory 50% DFI. Um, quick note on this DUSD thing. In my opinion, this DUSD change so that you can use DUSD for the 50, first 50% is a huge thing for the ecosystem and for the uh, DeFi chain community. Um, and also for the DFI price, because um, from 11th of April, it will be possible to make a loan, uh, a vault with 100% DUSD as the collateral. And with this DUSD vault, you can then take a loan and put it into liquidity mining, getting 100% APR on this liquidity mining um, exposure, which means you, if you play it right, you get up to 66% APR on your DUSD without any exposure to DFI or anything else. So 100% market neutral, 66% APR, which is crazy. And I think we will see a huge amount of inflow into the um, ecosystem. But that, just as a side note, um, in this video, I will focus on the, how these things get implemented. Um, so let's continue with that. Um, so we have this DUSD thing and we have the futures contract, which is basically there, um, because of the D, uh, D token premium, right now, or in the beginning, we had a D token premium of up to 50%, which is not what we want when you want to have a tax price that's roughly the asset price. Um, right now, it's already down to uh, around 7% um, premium. But the goal is to get it within a corridor of plus minus 5%, but um, we can't pack it like we did with the DUSD, where we say, okay, it's exactly on the pack and 1% and then it um, gets arbitraged right away. Because um, on the one hand, the D tokens shouldn't be viewed as a security. So if we pack it exactly to the um, Oracle price, there's a high risk that they are uh, viewed as a security. And on the other hand, the Oracle might be lagging, might be behind or um, might even be um, not responding or not updating the price um, over the weekend, for example, where uh, the assets are not traded on the um, on the weekend. So, but they're traded on Diva chain. So you um, might have the situation where, where the Diva chain um, traders um, anticipate a huge market um, change or a huge increase in the price on Monday. And we already do that on the weekend. We already trade it up on the weekend. And then the Oracle is yeah, lagging and down. Um, and we don't want to burn anything and um, force the price down in such a case. That's why the solution now is that we only do uh, provide this arbitrage possibility with the future swap um, once a week. So it's every seven times 2,880 blocks. We have a settlement of those futures, and those futures will settle. Um, we have two futures. One will settle 5% above the Oracle price, and the discount will settle 5% below the Oracle price. So you are always getting a 5% worse price than the Oracle itself, but you can't trade the Oracle. Um, so that's um, what keeps the price within is 5% once a week. So in the rest of the week, it might trade at 10, 20% up or down. Um, so it's just a loose binding, but it's a binding to have over time get a stable um, corridor. And again, if you want to see what changed, um, we have the release 2.70, the fourth canning road. Um, it's a mental update and everything. And if you scroll down a bit, you see the features that went into this. Um, update. We have on one hand this DFIP, this P missing, 
um, on the 11.55 pull request and we have this DUSD on the 11.28 um, let's start with the DUSD part because that's a small change um, because it's just a different check um, we already have DUSD as collateral in, we already have it with the uh, ratio and everything, so it's just for this checking. Um, and this happens here in the master nodes, master node checks, which is basically where if you send in a transaction or a request to the node that we say, I want to withdraw collateral, or in the uh, message where I send in, I want to take a loan, those are the two points where not needs to check that you are allowed to do that. So after your action, you still have 50% of your needed collateral as, uh, um, as uh, for, um, in DUSD or DFI. So what we do here is um, we get an optional value, means this value might be there or not, it might be set or not, at a token DUSD. We only set it if we are above Fort Canning Road. So from now on, if this DUSD token here, this variable is set, we are in the uh, kind of world and can, can do it. And it's just a rename of the, uh, the uh, variable. You know, it's defined now, it's collaterals. It's a bit uh, misleading uh, because it's not total collaterals. This means the total required collaterals or total required collaterals, so DFI and DUSD in the future case. Um, so now we only counted um, some type of the DFI. Um, now we say, okay, if I or the DUSD is the data, so it's very set, and it's um, we are currently this collateral is uh, DUSD, sum it up. So just go over all the collaterals and sum up the values um, for the ones we want, and then just compare it. There's just the renaming. And before uh, Canning Hill, we had that 50% of the whole collateral must have been DFI. Um, it's this one, and now since Canning Hill, we have this that only 50% of the required collateral. So um, if you have a small loan, not the whole collateral needs to be 50% um, DUSD or DFI, only the amount that you need to secure this loan. Um, and that's what's happening here. We have the loans times the scheme ratio, and then 50%, so half of it. And the only other change is that you change the uh, message. To be DFI or DUSD after getting road, um, which is just a nice um, to make it a better um, message for the user. Um, and then you see this is once here where in the withdrawal message, and then once in the take loan message, we have the same check for this action as before, and therefore we have to do the same changes. Yeah, that's the DUSD change. The other stuff is just um, small housekeeping and stuff. So let's look at the futures match request. Here, yeah, a bit more stuff happens. Also, again, um, mainly housekeeping or stuff that happens around it. Um, we won't look into that in the details because I think it's not that interesting. Um, it's basically what's happening is that um, there is a new hard coded smart contract. Um, that handles that stuff. Um, we will look at how this, how it's handled, but the change bar in the chain parameters and the counts and stuff, the data structures in there, which are just yeah, boring stuff that you have to do in C++ if you do something like that. The interesting things are basically two things. Change the keys. Um, interesting things are two two parts. On the one hand, um, where we send in the message, where we say, okay, the part that e how you tell the, um, the node or the, the chain that you want to create this future swap um, or with the war one and then how it's processed. Um, maybe a quick how this whole thing works. Um, as I said, it's once a week, it's settled. Um, during this period, so uh, during the week, you can send in to the chain uh, or to the co smart contract in this case, um, you send in a, I want to swap thousand DUSD for the Tesla. Um, then this one saves that and says, okay, um, I, I keep that as a reference. And at the settlement date on a future block, um, um, that's once a week, um, it will go through all the stuff that he saved and said, all the swaps, okay, this address wants to swap a thousand DUSD 
I take the thousand USD um, and convert it with the active oil worker price to um, the T, uh, to T Tesla with a five percent premium and swap it. Um, so when you send it in, you can't decide the price. The price is decided on the settlement. So you request a swap, but it's a future swap which will be done in the future. Um, so that's the, the theory behind it. Let's go into the code. Um, you have here the um, handling of the future swap message. Um, basically, a lot of checks. Are you the owner of this address? If not, get out. Do we have the attributes? Do we, is the DFIP even active? If not, get out. Um, do we have a block reward, a block period and reward um, keys in the attributes? If not, get out. Fun fact, the block period is the um, is one week um, of uh, blocks and reward is basically a completely wrong name. It just, it's a bit legacy and got in and we missed this before the release to change it. Um, it's changed now. Um, but this is the the, uh, the premium or discount, so it's five percent. It's saved as attributes on the chain, um, but yeah, basically it's called reward. But don't get confused; it's not a reward. It's just this period, uh, this premium um, offset. Then um, we check if the if you want to swap a positive amount, um, you can swap zero or negative, and if the loan token that you want to swap from is even a loan token. And then if you swap from the USD to T token, because that's one, one way to swap the USD into T token, um, we check if the destination that you have, if it's disabled, because you could disable this swap functionality from single tokens. If it's not disabled, check if the token is even a loan token, if it's there, if not get out. So it's just error checking. And then the other way around, is that if you swap from a D token, you have to swap into TUSD. So there is no way that you can swap from D Tesla to D or something. You have to swap from the from a D token to TUSD. So once you, if you're not swapping from the USD but from a D token, you can't define a destination. You can only define um, you're swapping from this token, and automatically it decides that the destination is DUSD. So it only checks. If for this D token is disabled, if not, everything's fine. Now, as I said, internally it's handled as a swap smart contract, so we get the smart contract address of the future swap contract. Um, if it's not there, it's a problem. Um, then we have the active token if they are active and everything. Um, and then we have two cases in this message: Are you withdrawing uh, um, from a swap? Or are you creating one? Let's start with the creating because it's a bit simpler and um, easier to understand. So if you want to create a swap, so you as a user say, I want to swap a thousand TUSD to T Tesla, and it will be settled on the future block. But right now I'm telling you I want to swap. Um, we already checked everything. So all we need to do now is we transfer those tokens. So your ID, the TUSD or whatever, um, and the value is transferred from your address to the contract, to the smart contract. So it's stored there, it's locked, you can't access it until you either withdraw it or it's settled. Um, and we store this future user value, it's just a data store on the chain that we say, on this blockade, this address one, told us to swap this source, and the source is a um, token and value, so a token amount, um, swap this token with this amount into this destination. Destination is just the ID of the token. So again, you don't get to choose the price. The price will be defined on the settlement. So here you just stay um, safe that this address wants to um, swap this amount of the USD into the Tesla. And you update the balances and we are done. So as I said, sending in the swap is pretty simple. Getting it out, so um, withdrawing, it's a bit more complicated because you can send in multiple swaps. You can send in, um, I want to swap a thousand DUSD for to T Tesla. Um, a few blocks later, say, oh, I want to swap another five hundred DUSD to T Tesla and stuff like that. So you might have a long list of open swaps that you want to um, that you want to have. Um, but now, when you withdraw, it might be that you withdraw. You send in five hundred DUSD, two hundred DUSD, and then you want to withdraw 
550. Um, so you need to um, sum that up somehow, and that's what we are doing here. Um, making it easy, um, just go through all the future swaps um, of this owner and only take the ones that are in the current period, because that's current period started, current height minus the block period, what's in this period. Um, so it's in this if it's not in this period, I ignore it. If it's this owner and the same token ID and the same destination, because it could be that you have other swaps open, so we don't want to count them. Um, then if it's the right owner, the right token ID, the right destination, we sum them up, so we, we keep them and store them in these future values away. And then we go over those stored values and add them up. That is, okay, all the values, the amounts, add them up. And, and that's now the crucial part, we remove, erase those future values. So this, we store this um, swap for this user, this long list. All the, user, the values we have in here now, we erase them from the ledger and say, okay, um, from this total futures, we sum up the total amount. From this total amount, reduce my um, amount that I want to withdraw. If this is, if I want to withdraw more than I have, this is an error and I'm out. Um, but I withdraw that and now I check, do I even have a, an amount left? Do I still want to swap anything? If yes, save this as a new swap into the chain. Um, basically because it doesn't matter if you have 10 different swaps with $100 each, or if you have one swap with $1,000, it's just totally want to swap $1,000 to the GTP Tesla. That's why we aggregate them together, basically remove the single ones and have the new resulting one minus the withdrawal and store that again amount destination for this owner at the current um, blockade and we transfer the tokens back this id this amount from the um, smart contract to your address send it back to you and update the balances and done so this is how the swap is created how it's sent in and how it's withdrawn during the stop um, during the period. And then now we have that in, we have stored the amount of swaps that wants to be done. And now we can say, okay, um, we want to settle that. Um, again, a lot of stuff in between there, but the settlement um, happens when a new block is coming in um, and it's the futures block. Two things that are important here. Um, we, uh, we process that in the process future, so that's a new method that we have. And this is called here within the connect block, so where we process everything that happens in a block. Um, it's called, and it's called after the process oracle events. That means that since the futures block, the settlement block, is also a price block where the oracle prices are updated um, and the fixed interval prices are updated, um, we settle the future on the active oracle price but the settlement happens already after updating the active oracle price. So if you want to know what price the future will be settled on, it's during the last block, um, the last period, the price period, the last 120 blocks before the future settlement, the next oracle price during this period will be the price that the future will settle on. Because on this block, um, the oracle events swap the next price to the active price, and then in here, the active price will be used. Um, so you only know 120 blocks before the future settlement, you know the price that will be, um, that the settlement will happen at. Um, so if you want to do the um, arbitrage, you don't want to do that um, more than 120 blocks before the price, because the oracle might change, um, so you might be off just as a word of warning for the arbitrages out there. Um, now, if we do the process the futures, first, are we already cutting away road? If not, get out. Do we have attributes? If not, get out. Is the defib even active? If not, forget it. Um, do we have the block period and the reward? As I said, reward, wrong name, but do we have these keys in the attributes? If not, get out. Now, we have this check the period, the block period, um, or get the attribute, and check if the current height is a multiple of the block period. 
If not, we are not on a uh, futures block. We don't want to settle. Get out. Now we want to settle. We are in. We want to do this. Um, get the rewards or the off the premium and discount offset. Um, if you didn't watch the previous videos, um, coin is basically just a reference for one because internally to prevent floating point errors. Internally, all calculations are done as a multiple, or all numbers are represented as a multiple of 100 million. So the, the Satoshi amount from Bitcoin, where that's where it's come from, because we're based on Bitcoin, um, in, on DeFi chain we call it Phi, um, so one Phi is one 100 millionth, and every amount is in multiples of that, so coin is just 100 million, but in, for the calculations it's easier to see this, that as one, and this now, so coin minus reward percent, is represents 0.95, and the premium is 1.05, um, just in a other representation. Um, then we have the future prices. Um, this map will just store for each token what are the prices that we want to settle on. Um, it's future prices. Futures prices is just um, a data structure with a premium and a um, discount price. And then we go through um, each loan token, go in, get the token. Check that it's um, not disabled um, because you can disable the loan token for uh, the future for one loan token. Um, then get the amount in currency. And here we have use next price force for the active one. But as I said, the next is already the active. Um, it must be um, live, so the oracle needs to be um, there. And we go in and say, okay, um, get give me the amount in this currency. So we give me the discount, which is. 0.95 in this so the price of 0.95 D token, which is basically 5% discount to the price. And the same thing for the premium, we get the discount price, the premium price. If both of them are there, or other way around, if one of them is missing, forget it. So if the, it's not live or anything. Um, and if they are there, put them into this um, data structure to say, okay, save the price for later that we know what we sell on. Now we have all the prices, how we want to settle the futures. We say, okay, what's the start date of this period? Um, because minus block period is the last bit, basically. Um, goes through all the future user futures user values, which is the thing we stored in the, uh, in the swap message um, above. Um, go in, um, if it's from this current period, get the loan token if we have a problem, because we can't get the loan token. Big problem, a third means crash, stop the whole node because something is totally off. And then again, this distinguishing between are we swapping from the USD to the token or the other way around. Um, if we're swapping from the USD, get the destination token, check if it's there. Get the premium price because if you want to buy or swap from the USD to the token, uh, to the token and the premium is what you want or what's counting, then convert your DUSD to D token amount with this price. So just divide this by this. Um, so you get the total. You change this in the token amount that you have the ID and the total. And this is where the swap happens. This is just adding to the balance of the owner of this swap the destination. So this total amount. Now you have your token um, swapped from DUSD to the token. And that's it. The only thing that's also interesting here is if this add, um, so this add access of the map um, returns an out of range, so we don't find this key, we save this contract as an unpaid contract because we can't solve it, we don't have a price um, because the oracle is not active or this token is not active or anything. So we can't pay the contract. Um, other way around is the same thing. Um, we now, we are not going from DUSD, but we're coming from the token. We get the DUSD token um, and we get the discount price because if you go the other way around, if you want to send basically the D token in a swap, you get the 95% um, 90, price. Um, multiply that to see how much DUSD do you get out. So this is basically the difference. Um, here you have a divide, here you have a multiply, and you take discount and premium. The other stuff is basically the same. You get the destination token, um, and again we add now the DUSD 
to the owner's address um, and you get your swapped um, yeah, DUSD. And again, if we don't find um, the price, it's an unpaid contract. That's it. That's basically the, where the magic happens. And the only thing that's now happening is how to deal with unpaid contracts. Um, if you can't pay the contracts as if it's unpaid, it's basically a forced withdrawal. So we pretend it never happened or we, we uh, pay it back. Um, so you go, we go through all the unpaid contracts, erase the future user values. Um, so we don't save that for further ref future reference. It's as, it, as if it never happens. We subtract the contract, um, the, the um, amount that you sent in from the contract address, give it back to the owner and subtract the balance. And that's it. So just as a um, sum up, um, when you send in the token to be swapped, the GUSD or the token, we um, transfer this token to the contract address and it stays there. Even if, the, if it's swapped, the original amount stays there and the swapped amount is just created out of thin air and sent to your address. So we um, basically have the amount of burned DUSD or burned D tokens in this contract address. If you withdraw, it's um, returned um, and not, so as if it's never happened, same thing if it's not paid, if it's an unpaid contract, we have a force, force withdrawal um, where it's um, just written in this address. With that, I think that's it. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Um, I hope it helped. I hope that was interesting and gave you a bit of an overview how this whole thing works and how it's done under the hood. If you have a developer, if you can read C++ and understand a bit what's happening there, please join us in the repository, um, do reviews. You don't need to code anything. Just get in, review the code, leave your comments um, so that we find all the bugs and everything before we go into testing. This thing was on test now for a week um, and we tested it excessively. So I think we handled all the stuff and we found all the bugs. Um, so should be a pretty smooth hard fork again. Um, looking forward to that, looking forward to the first um, future settlement, which will happen on the 14th of April, I think. So let's see how many DUSD we burn and what's happening. And hope let's hope that the DUSD walls have the effect that I think they have. Um, and looking to a bright future of DFI. So see you in the next video. Bye.